In this video, we'll talk about volumes with hollow centers, in other words, finding volumes using the area between two curves, as well as finding volumes when we rotate around an axis that isn't just the x-axis or y-axis. So let's get into this conceptually first. Now, volumes with hollow centers usually means you're finding the volume of a solid rotated around an axis, but the volume is generated from an area between two curves, which means that if we have our g of x and f of x here, the only area we're looking at is this portion right here, which means that if we take the volume and we rotate it around, let's say, the x-axis, then we're going to end up with this hollow center. So what does this look like? Well, let's do the outermost circle of f of x. It's going to look something like this. And then if we take a look at the inner circle, g of x, we have another circle inside. And in order to get the area between the two when we rotate it around, well, we just take the outermost circle and we subtract the innermost circle, and that gives us this area in between. So, what does it look like? Well, if we want the area of all these individual slices, it's just going to be the area outer, which I'll call AO, minus the area inner, which I'll call AI. So this will just be pi r squared out minus pi r squared in, which we can just factor as pi times the outer radius squared minus the inner radius squared. So let's do an example, except let's make it kind of hard right off the bat. So let's do it around the y-axis instead of the x-axis. With an x-axis case, at this point, all you have to do is integrate after finding the radius. So let's find the volume of the region rotated about the y-axis bound by curves y equals 1 quarter x squared, x equals 2, and y equals 0. So the first thing we should always do is draw this. And this picture will look a little bit messy at some times, so uh, I'll redraw it a little bit clearer after, but I will make some notes on this diagram. So x equals 2 is the first line we're bounded by. We'll call x equals 1 about there. Uh, we're bound by y equals 0, so the x-axis. And then 1 quarter x squared. So let's put 1 there, and actually let's put 1 up here. Okay, so at x equals 0, we're at the origin, and x equals 1, we're at about a quarter. At x equals 2, we finally get to 1, so our curve will look like this, and this will be y equals 1 quarter x squared. This green one we'll just call x equals 2. Okay, so we're rotating about the y-axis. So the first important thing to note is that we're going to be integrating from 0 to 1 because we're doing it around the y-axis. So it'll be something like uh, 0 to 1 of hy dy. But what's being rotated here? Well, this is being rotated, this area. So if we were to draw a circle in about the middle just to see what we're doing here, we have this x equals 2 line. So we'll have a circle formed by this x equals 2. And then our inner, our y equals 1 quarter x squared. Oh, that'll look about here. So we have a circle like this, and of course we're looking for the area between the two. So our area between these two curves will look like the purple part here. Okay, so how do we get the formula for this? Well, let's just focus on this circle here. And again, we'll just remember that we're integrating from 0 to 1. Just erasing this to get some more space. And maybe we can erase some of this pink stuff too. In fact, let's just redraw the whole thing. Okay, that was a terrible drawing. Okay, there we go. Okay, so what is the radius of the inner circle? Well, this is the change in x. So x is going to be a function of y, essentially. So our delta x, or let's just say x is going to be equal to something. Well, what is x equal to? Well, we have y is equal to 1 quarter x squared, so 4y will equal x squared, which means that 2 root y will equal x. 
So the inner circle will have a radius of 2 root y. The outer circle, again, this is just x equals 2. So the outer circle will always have a radius of 2. So how can we find the area between the two? Well, to find the area between the two, we just take the outer area and subtract the inner area. What's the outer area? The outer area is going to be pi and then the radius squared, which is just going to be 2 squared. Then we'll subtract pi times the inner area, which will just be 2 root y squared. So if we do some factoring here, this will be pi 4 minus 4y, which again, we can just factor out the 4, so we're going to get 4 pi times 1 minus y, and that's the area. So now, we just integrate that from 0 to 1. So this will be the integral from 0 to 1 of 4 pi times 1 minus y dy. So let's just calculate this. The antiderivative of 4 pi 1 minus y, well, we can factor out the 4 pi to make this a little bit easier. So this is just going to be 4 pi times the integral of y minus y squared over 2 from 0 to 1, which is equal to 4 pi times 1 minus 1 half. So that's 4 pi times a half, which is just equal to 2 pi. So the volume of the region rotated about the y-axis bound by this curve is just going to be 2 pi. And again, really all this is is taking the area of the outer circle and then subtracting the area of the inner circle in order to get the area between the two curves. Then we take infinitely many slices in order to get the volume. So that's essentially curves with hollow centers. Now let's look at curves where we rotate about a different axis. So uh, right here I have one on the x-axis. I'm going to change this and make this right here. So here we have y is equal to, uh, let's say this is negative two. Okay, and I wanna find the volume when we rotate this curve, which just looks like this around y equals negative two. So what's happening? It has a hollow center, right? So there's this area here in the curve that will just be empty. So when we do this here, we're going to get a bunch of disks that look like this with the outer part, and we'll also have an inner emptiness there. So again, we have outer and inner. So what is the inner? Well, the inner, of course, has a radius of 2 because we're two away from the origin. But what does this radius happen to be? Well, there's the curve itself. So let's call this curve f of x, which means that if I break this up into two parts, we have this height being f of x. So this here is f of x. But there's also the distance to the axis we're rotating around which happens to be two, which means that the entire distance, in fact, let's do this in white. The entire distance from our axis of rotation, y equals negative two, to the top of our curve is going to be two plus f of x. So this is the outer radius. So again, we really have to focus on drawing these diagrams and also reasoning about what these distances are. So let's do a real question. Okay, y equals x cubed, y equals zero, x equals one, and we're rotating about x equals two. So there's a couple things going on. The first thing is we are gonna be integrating across the y-axis again. And the example I just showed was integrating across uh, an x-axis, essentially. Uh, y equals negative two, it's kind of like an x-axis. So let's just draw this. So this is going to be y equals zero. So our x-axis is a bound. x equals one is going to be a bound here. And then we're going to rotate it about x equals two. Okay, finally x cubed. 
Well, we go up to x equals 1, so what is x cubed at 1? Well, it's just going to be 1, and at 0 it's going to be 0, so our curve looks kind of similar. So this is what we're dealing with here. We are dealing with this area, and we're rotating about x equals 2. So let's actually draw a slice. So let's draw an outer slice. So here is an outer slice, and let's draw an inner slice. So this would be an inner slice. Okay, maybe I can make this a little bit further, just so it looks a little bit more realistic. Okay, so the question is, what are the radiuses of these? Well, let's take a look at this. Our inner radius is kind of simple, right? So it's rotating at 2, the line's at 1, so our radius for our inner is just going to be 1. So let's call this R in is just 1. But what is R out? Well, let's get rid of this blue line. Let's think about this. So the distance from the y-axis to the curve. Well, let's solve in terms of x here. So this is a change in x, of course. So if we take y equals x cubed, we get that x is equal to the cubed root of y. So here we have the cubed root of y being the distance from the y-axis to the curve itself. But then we also have to account for the total distance here. So how do we get this total distance? Well, this is a little bit harder to get. And this is hard to get because we don't necessarily have a function that goes from x equals 2 to our curve. So instead what we can do is we can consider the whole length. Well, what is this whole length? In fact, how do we just isolate this purple part right here? Well, instead of just taking the distance from the y-axis to the curve, we know there is a distance of 2 between these points. And then, let's say I wanted to get this distance here. So again, the distance I have in purple below. So this distance here. Well, if I just take 2 and I subtract this portion right here, I'll be left with the distance from x equals 2 to the orange curve. So in fact, this distance right here is just 2 minus the cubed root of y. And that is our outer radius. So that's 2 minus the cubed root of y. And again, let me just go over that one more time just to make sure we're clear. Okay, so let's actually just get rid of this entire diagram and explain this very, very carefully. Okay, so we have some curve. This starts at 0. This ends at 1. We're rotating around 2. And of course, we have our y-axis here. Okay, so in order to get the distance from 2 to our curve, we go about this in two ways. First of all, we notice the difference between our x equals 2 and the y-axis is 2. And then we want to subtract the distance from the y-axis to our curve which happens to be the cubed root of y. Okay, so in order to get this purple distance here, this just means we take the total distance to the y-axis, and then we subtract the distance from the y-axis to the curve. This is kind of like subtracting vectors, if you think about it this way. And of course, this will change as we move up. Okay, so that's how we got our outer and inner radius. And of course, our... Integration, again, is just going to be from 0 to 1. So let's also factor that in. We're going to have 0 to 1 of some function h of y dy. Okay, so now we need to find the area between them. So again, the area is just going to be area out minus area in, which we can factor this out as pi, and then take the outer area squared. So that'll be 2 minus the cubed root of y squared minus the inner, which is just going to be 1 squared. This will be pi times, well, if we take 2 minus the cube root of y squared, we're going to get 4 minus, uh, this would be 4 cube root of y. Then we're going to add 
y to the two thirds. In fact, let's actually convert this into exponents with fractions. Okay, so at this point, we can simplify this a little bit. This will be three minus four y to the third plus y to the two thirds. Okay, so now we have our area. Now we can just take the integral from zero to one of this area in order to get the volume. So it'll be the integral of zero to one, we'll factor out the pi, and this will be three minus four y cubed, or four y to the one third plus y to the two thirds dy, which is just going to be equal to, well, if we take the antiderivative, this will be pi times three y minus, well, okay, four y to the one third is gonna be four y to the four thirds over four. So this will just end up as, let's see, it should be three y to the four thirds. And then we will add, well, two thirds ends up being five thirds. So we're going to get three fifths to the y to the two thirds. Okay, and this will be from zero to one. And if we evaluate this, we're gonna get pi times, so this will be three minus three plus three fifths, which is just going to be equal to three pi over five. Okay, so that was volumes using the disk method two, where we do some more complicated problems. I did both of these with respect to the y-axis because these are usually the trickier problems. Um, and hopefully if the x-axis rotations, uh, they're kind of just straightforward at this point. But as always, if you have any questions, please leave them in the comments below and I will do my best to answer them.